Welcome to the Digital Amateur Television Experimenters Night. This is VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania. Amateur radio is a worldwide hobby that has many different aspects. Digital television is just one of the many modes and areas that are covered. Maybe you're interested in becoming involved in the DATV Experimenters Nights. You realise that you do not have to be a radio amateur or need any ATV equipment to participate anywhere in the world. Also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the Heritage Listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. This is uh, VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experiment tonight. And I would like to welcome Lance, VK7ZA, Thank you. into the studio. So welcome, Lance. <laughs> now, Lance, this is actually Lance's first time in the studio, so so um, there you go. And Lance is here to talk to us about N1MM. But before we get underway, uh, I'll just do an acknowledgement of country. In recognition of the deep history of uh, and culture of this island, we'd like to acknowledge and pay our respects to Tasmanian Aboriginal people, all Tasmanian Aboriginal people, uh, and especially the Muanina people uh, from around here, uh, the traditional owners on the land upon which we meet and gather tonight. So, now, last time we had uh, our DATV night, which was... A couple of weeks ago, because I've been to NZ, <laughs> NZ, um, in between, um, and hello to Andrew uh, from Signet, um, um, <laughs> loving the hard cuts, yeah, okay, uh, my transitions need work, I, I agree with that, um, so, um, but last time we were on, um, I showed, uh, for most of the session, the installation and the configuration of N1MM, so to get you up and going with N1MM. Now, not being a common user, a, st a standard user of N1MM, I thought, mm, I really need to try and get somebody in. And Lance, put up his hand. <laughs> so Lance is actually a, a user of N1MM and gives us, hopefully will give us some, you know, the user and we should probably just clarify this is very much a case of in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king <laughs> so <laughs> i like that <laughs> i like that <laughs> so so lance give, give us a bit of a, a bit of an idea okay so, so i guess I'll, I'll go back to where i started so the first okay. contest i ever did was remembrance day last year okay um cool and surprisingly, I enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting it to be that much fun. Oh, okay. But I was okay. using the, okay, cool. the VK logger or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, uh, VK, VKCL. VKCL. Yeah. yeah. And got to the end of it, and I thought, ah, oh, I hadn't actually been using any logging software to date. So I thought, oh, I should just start using the same thing. But of course, you can't really use VKCL for logging. So I had to look around, and I've, I don't know, I've don't really have the time to learn mm. a bunch of stuff. So mm. I thought, mm. I'll pick something I can use for general logging yep. and contest logging. And contest. And found N1MM. Well, and sure. 
spent a bit of time with it. So I've been using it as my contest logger now since Remembrance Day. Fantastic. Um, last year and used it in anger in the field day at the end of last year. Okay. okay. Um, and that okay. was good. Um, yep. Some lessons learned. But, okay. Um, That's what we want to hear. Yeah. That's, and so yeah. I thought it might be useful. I'll run through some of the benefits that I see over okay. other things that make it really good. Okay. And some of the not so good things. Yeah. Okay. Um, like everything, there's pain and benefits and... <laughs> For me, I've decided the benefits are worth it. No gain, um, no pain. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is probably a good follow-on from um, anyone who watched Justin's video, the, the last one he did, um, and sort of take it on from there. So the one thing that, that I really like is the whole thing is keyboard-driven. Yeah. And so if you, you can change frequency, you can change mode, you can do everything just through that little window where you, where you type stuff in. Um, and so if you've got like a foot switch for your um, push, push to talk, talk. Yep. and a microphone that you're not having to hold, you can just keep your hands on the keyboard, Love it. Um, not, not jumping backwards and forwards yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, around a whole bunch of things. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I won't, I, won't, I won't go through it, but there's a whole bunch of little shortcuts okay. that you can use. You know, like when you were showing it, you were showing hitting the tab to go between. So forget about the tab and you use the space bar. And so when you're doing contest <laughs> logging, you, when you're in the when you type in the contact name, that, that and you hit the space bar and yep. it jumps over the report, like the five nine nine or the five nines. Yep, yeah, yeah. Because that's what you're going to get anyway. Okay. And it goes straight to what the report is. Yeah, so there you can so see. So in that window there. Yeah, you hit space and yep. it jumps straight across to the where you put your number in. Yep, okay. Um, and then if you, if you do actually need to change the sent or receive um, thing, then you, then you can use the tab. Yeah. But okay. if you don't, then you know, I, it's a whole I, lot and, quicker. And that's a good thing because I used VKCL and VKCL you tab everywhere. Mm. That that's that's you just get used to that. And well, so that's, that's Windows, isn't it? You correct. Just, or you just you tab know, any computer, Macs as well. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. tab around. Um, if if you're not using a mouse or something like that, you you tab around the fields. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Um, got to have. Yeah. So the so if you just go back to that little yeah. little window. The really nice thing is if you've got more than one radio, so at the moment we're looking at the input window. Yep. If you configure your station to have either two radios or two VFOs, yep. you can actually have two of those windows open. Oh, yeah, and so okay. if you've got a radio that's like 2 meter, 70 centimeter... Um, and then HF... Yeah, 1.2 gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and another one for HF, yep. you could have your two radios, and then you just jump between the two, and that's controlling two different radios. I love it. Um, oh. Yeah, so okay. again, it just saves yep. a bit of a bit of faff. Well, um, and and it gets over. Can I just say it gets over that whole thing with VKCL of having to go to the particular frequency, yeah. which which you can sh keyboard shortcut if you're really into that, but it can be a real pain. Yeah. It, See, I never realised this until after um, the field day. Yep. Okay. And so okay. I was using. I had it hooked up to my HF radio, yep. and I would put the information in, and then as soon as I wanted to jump onto two meters, seventy centimeters, I would have like if 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 I typed the the new frequency in because that's what you do yeah. in N1 uh, MM. Correct. You, you type the frequency in, and it changes the radio. So I needed to say I'm in six meters. Sorry, not six, like two meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then of course the HF radio can't go to two meters, so it goes <laughs> and it has a spec, and so I was pulling out the USB cable. <laughs> To be able to do it on two meters to log a contact on two, and then of course everything goes wonky, yeah, yeah, and, you, and then N one MM goes. Yeah, I can't connect to the radio, so you've got to plug it back in again when you when you're done on your on the two meter seventy centimeter rig, and then and then you're sort of back cooking again. Okay. Whereas I had a play afterwards because I thought surely people aren't doing this, um, and yeah, so now you can just configure two radios and jump between the windows. Correct. And it's wonderful. That's fantastic. Can, can you, just a matter of interest, can you actually make them, those screens, look different? Because my concern with having like two of those screens up mm. is which radio is it? Yeah, oh, so, so what you would normally do, um, so that's that middle section yep. where you've got all of the shortcut buttons. Yep. Yep. Um, you can get rid of those. Okay. So you can do that. Okay. If you just, just go back again, like yep. this so people can see. So normally what you would do though is if you've got physically your two radios side by side, yep. then on the screen you would put those corresponding. If In you've got 
your HF radio and your mobile rig like that, yep. you would then stack the windows like that. So I it's pretty it. obvious okay. um, which one you're which. dealing yeah. with. Okay. And if you if you're doing if you're typing the frequencies in on the uh, with your keyboard anyway, yep. yeah, 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 um, yeah. it's going to tell you if you're on the wrong yeah, um, okay. radio because it's not going because the because the radio won't go to that. Sort yeah. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I think yeah. yeah, it's just a matter of. That's good. Um, yeah, because you can specify in each of those, each rig, which bands are available yep. on that rig. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so that I really, really like that. Um, the partial window is is a thing of absolute beauty. So I don't know. Oh, can okay. I scroll on here? Um, you you can well and truly scroll on here. So let's just see if. I, this this is the opening screen of uh, the N1MM. Um, Let me see. It docks. No. Oh, hang on. If I documentation so, glass. Windows. Ah, oh, where's Windows? Opa. Shortcut table of contents. Oh no, that's not what I think it is. I, uh, Here we go. Um, partial. Please check. Maybe it's the check window. Sorry, folks. No, no. We should, you, should know the proper yeah. names for these things. Talk among yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this one here. Yeah. So this is a little window that lives wherever you put it. I've got it on the very left, next to where I type my call signs in. Okay. Okay. And what's wonderful is if I type VK question mark Zulu Alpha. It, in that little window, it will pop up and show VK7 Zulu Alpha. Like, oh, do you mean Lance? Yeah. And basically, okay. when you submit logs, like anything that's been in a log that's been submitted somewhere in the world, I yep. don't fully understand okay. this. Okay, okay. Like, there's this master list. And so, okay. even when I'm just um, logging contacts on, on HF, yep. yeah, yeah. I can, um, yeah. Um, so you, you so put I, in a I call can, sign, yeah. and if it's got a record of it, yeah. that comes up. And so it's really useful if you get the first bit of the call sign and you're not quite sure what the rest was. That that thing's just going all the time. Yeah. Okay. So the first two columns are um, like ones in the world that yep. are available. And okay. then the next two columns are ones either that you've worked or that you've worked in this competition. Okay. And so okay. it's just really, really useful. Um, well, true. A good little shortcut. And even well, if you just true. type part, part of the call in and, and space, I think it is, the the one that's selected, it will just pop it straight in for you. Mm. Um, okay. So I really really enjoy that that partial window. Well, sure. Doing um, like HF when sometimes the band's rough and you struggle to hear what it is, but then once you look at your options, amazingly sometimes you can hear what the what the contact is. Yep. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the partial window is is absolutely wonderful. Cool. Um, if we go back, let's go back where we were. Holy smokes. Where are you wanting to go? Um, back to the previous window. I can't see where we could have that. No, no. Yeah. What's what's going on here is we're, we're, we've got that screen. Oh, just. that's okay. We can just, just can it. So where do you want to go here? Um, or you want to go back to the original window? Yeah. The previous window. Oh, there we go. Good so, job. Yep. Yeah, so, so these, these little buttons here... They're all assigned to an F key. Okay. Okay. And if you've got an older radio that doesn't have a voice keyer, you can record all of your little messages. So you can record your CQ message. Okay. Okay. Hit F1, and it'll go out. You can specify repeats, I so it'll, it. it'll send out your CQ, and then after however long, it'll do it again yep. and again. Okay. Okay. And if you want it to stop, all you have to do is start typing in that window, or hit the space bar, or the escape. And I think it's escape, and, and it just stops. stops transmitting. Yeah. Um, okay. Which, which is great as well. And so nice. I use that mainly for CQs. Yeah. Because you set it up. If you're doing CW again, and you've you've got a cable that's actually um, keying your rig. Yep. You can have all of those doing it in CW as well. I love it. And because it knows whether you're in CW mode or whether you're in. Yep. Um, uh, voice. Voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It knows whether to play your wave wave file or whether to. Do the CW, do the CW. Yeah. I love it, and it's great. Um, 
it's it's just absolutely brilliant. So and it saves your voice. I'll yeah, tell so you my now. my radio's got voice keying, and but I just use it on here anyway. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it means that again, like using two radios, it doesn't matter which radio you're using. It's it's the still same. using your yep. your thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So so I'll, I'll just I'll, and then voice keying. Given if you are using two radios. Yep. You only need to set that up once, I assume, yeah. and assign it to that that key in that in mm. that window. Yep. Uh, right. Well, so yeah, so F one is going in, on mine, for instance, yep. is CQ. Yep. And it doesn't matter which window I'm in. There's, you know, the folder structure is you know N one MM, Lance or VK seven ZA. Yep. And then CQ dot Yeah. So it's going to play that same. WAV file, regardless of which rig I'm using. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So we can probably can that. I love it. People love can it. look at our beautiful faces. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. But My anyway. beautiful face. Um, um, uh, and then, and then, so uh, the other thing that's really good. Is there yep. a question? No, 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 no. We've got Ron, uh, Ron Man. Um, not, not sure what's going on with the RF, uh, Ron. Uh, it certainly is on, but uh, I, I haven't checked. Uh, I haven't checked it uh, of late, but uh, I think the RF's going out. And also, uh, Jeff, VK3, MGM, uh, from the Bellarine Peninsula near Geelong. So, uh, welcome. Welcome. The new, uh, the, new place, uh, the new place where the spirit of Tasmania comes in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, we were talking briefly before we came on air about um, the way N1MM integrates with other tools. Mm. And so, if you've got... Um, like we were talking about um, WS JTX. JTX yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it will work with that. The one that I wanted to talk about is Ritty. Okay. So, so okay. this is really good. So okay. again, for if you're not in um, VK7, just block your ears for a moment. Um, it's really good because you get the same amount of points on Remembrance Day for Ritty as you do for CW, right? And so if you, I love it. So if you configure Ritty to uh, with N1MM, so basically you open up Ritty, it opens up the Ritty window. As you do contacts in Ritty, N1MM just logs them automatically for you. So you're not having to do your your Ritty window here and then come across and log it. Like log it. It's just and that it's just magic. That's what I love with WSJT as well. It it just logs. It just yeah. it just <laughs> you, you go across the log and there it is, and you go oh okay right don't have to do anything here. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and so I think it, it's just a wonderful tool with the way it integrates different software, um, and it, it can log straight from them. Well, and I think, yeah, I think it can be to our benefit um, come later uh, on in the year. Correct. Yeah. We'll All right. If you're already. if you're not in VK seven, you can start listening again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unblock your ears. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the other thing, I guess, that the the last real benefit that that I want to talk about is the band plan. Yep. Um, okay. So. Down the side on mine, I've got it's as a vertical window. Yep. Okay. And it, whenever I've worked a station, it will stick it in that band plan, so I can see where where everyone is. Yep. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, which is fairly useful, but where it becomes really useful is if we start using clusters. And okay. so, if I'm using a cluster, yep. and you're using the same cluster yep. as me, we're then seeing the same. That's right. Whenever you've worked a station, then they pop up on my book. Uh, they pop up in my band plan, so yeah. I, so I immediately know this guy's calling CQ over there. And like one of the issues for us down in southern Tasmania is we don't always get to hear everyone. Correct. So it's Correct. really useful for me to know that somebody who's thirty k's away is it's... talking to this VK three four five six seven yeah 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 zero yeah yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. person. And yeah. so yeah, so that's that's something that especially if you're working as a team um, or I don't know, like it's. It's not even about the competition side. It's just about the. Let's just all. It's share, about making share the contacts, isn't it? And well, the more sure contacts really. we make, the more fun it is for everyone. Correct, correct. correct. And, and that's just a win. Like, I, I think no one's going to wish they had less contacts uh, um, and not share that. Stuff said, around. said no one ever. Said no amateur ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, and so I think, and I, like I'm not a, an expert with clusters at all. Like this is only in the last couple of months that I've tried to be tried to learn about them and okay. how they work okay. um, but it's the sort of thing I think if you're in a, a specific geographic and it's not just Tasmania if you're in in oh. a regional Victoria correct. you're going to have exactly the same issue as correct. what we have down here correct and so if you just come to an agreement with with the people who are in the same general vicinity as you yep. that yeah. you all use the one cluster um, and and when you log stuff you log it in, in such a way that 
all of your region can put the same nice. filter in, so then you all get the, the alerts, or not, not alerts, um, the well, spots. The share share um, of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I okay. think that's something I'd like to be able to explore more, and certainly that. for us, whether it's southern Tasmania or yep. the whole of Tasmania, depending yep. on how different it is, who can hear what. Yep. Um, would be really good, and it's not not just for contesting, but I think just for general usage. Well, true. Um, yeah. Well, especially, um, can I just say, everyone, absolutely everyone, I think, in the amateur radio world, uh, and if you're not, you've been living under a rock, is watching um, 3Y0J, uh, uh, <laughs> Bouvet Island. Uh, <laughs> And everyone's Speaking, who are you talking about? Every, everyone's <laughs> trying to um, to contact, and some of the screen grabs I've seen of the SDR receivers in like Europe and the US and whatever else are just chock a block. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is just off mm. the show. Um, and so you know, little old Tassie and trying to trying to operate, <laughs> trying to operate. We, we need all the help we can get. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, like, I, I, I don't really... And maybe we should have a whole discussion about clusters sometime. Well, I don't understand when you see people using a cluster that everybody else in their country is using the same cluster. Because... Or, sorry, not the same cluster, but, like, not filtering on, on much. Because it's useless for me to know what a VK5 oh. in Adelaide or, it's, it's or even someone in Melbourne is Correct. hearing. Correct. Because I'm not getting the same... No, no, no. Um, but But... In southern Tasmania, yeah. or or Tasmania for mm. for that sake, um, that's useful. Yeah. That's actually useful because you've got you've got half a chance of actually hearing the same thing. Yeah, and so I think so. Anyway, that's something that we can use okay. to really benefit. And of course, because you've got that band plan, you can either using the keyboard or just clicking with your mouse. If you see a station, you can click it, and your your radio goes straight to the right frequency, switches to the right mode, whether it's RITI, CW, no. voice, um, and it just looks after all of that for you. I love it. I love so, it. so those are some quick. I say quick, but it's been a bit of time. Um, That's right. That's some okay. quick benefits that that I sort of thought up off the top of my head this mm. afternoon. Some of the things that can be a bit frustrating, right? Okay. So, okay. the the developers are super super opinionated about <laughs> how they want things to be. Now, now this is a, a this is a developer target saying this. So, you know, there there is some there is a degree of um. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not saying whether it's bad yet no, or not. No, no. Um, but, but yeah, they, they're very opinionated on things. So they will not support um, OmniRig. They will not support um, our rig, rig control. Yep. Um, any of these things that we normally use to share uh, control. A, a cat control with, yeah, with yeah. the radio yep. um, isn't available. And so if you go to the support forums or, or discussions and, you know, somebody mentions how you can use um, OmniRig, there's generally a, a freak out and never, you should never be using this. And I, and I get it from, from somebody who writes enterprise-grade software, yeah. sometimes relying on third parties and you don't really know what's going on. No, no. Um, or we can say, look, our team, we're just going to write our own integrations. We're not going to... If anyone wants to work with it, we, they hold the view that N1MM is the, the master, right? The radio is a slave. The this programs everything is a slave to N one MM. So yeah. the only connection to the rig you really need is N one MM. But that's assuming all of the other software you want to use will talk to N one MM, which isn't always the case. Correct. And so, like in my in my case, I've got an SDR which gives me my um, band display, okay, yes, my yeah. waterfall, and yep. so forth. And then N one MM, which is doing my logging, and of course. You'd probably maybe be able to, but it's such a faff. So I've just got like a Comport splitter thing set up okay. um, in software, and okay. and so it all works anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just worth being aware that it is very opinionated on how they do things, and for better or worse. <laughs> but despite all of that, I still think yeah, you've been it's warned. amazing. <laughs> yeah. So don't go on the forum and say, "Oh, but it doesn't support OmniRig." Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. <laughs> oh my I, God. I, might, I might be being a bit, bit yeah. harsh. Um, yeah. yeah, World War Three. It, it's, yeah. it's it's their prerogative. It's their software. They no, no, and put hours and hours into correct. this bit of software that's correct, free correct. for us to use. Correct. And more power to them. And so. and in fact, and it, my my original introduction to N1MM was way, way back when it was a DOS program. Yeah, right. 
that was and like they were networking using netware and you know all of this sort of stuff mm. and it was it was all dos looking in a and it was all it was well and truly keyboard controlled then because yeah. you, you didn't have these nice windows and whatever else mm. and the thing that drew me to it was all of the D-Expeditions used M1 and MM. And I sort of went, well, if they're using it, it's got to be, you know, there's got to be something in mm. this. They're all using it. And I sort of, I, 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 I used it for a little while and I just sort of went, no, nah, this just, I, I'm just not gelling with this. I'm just, it, it's not something that I, I, I find effective. Mm. And that's when, you know, Windows developed, whatever else. So, um, and VKCL came on the scene other programs came on the scene, etc. There, there are a whole range of um, Unix um, hmm. logging programs as well and, and all that sort of stuff that I've had a bit of a look at. Um, but then I, 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 to, to do the presentation a couple of weeks ago, I, I went through the whole thing of installing it and, and I uninstalled it and I reinstalled it and it, it just worked and it was... And then I went through how do you actually use it and you, it's all through that window. And I sort mm. of went, I can see real advantages here and I can also see that I need a foot switch and I need a, <laughs> you know, I'm sort of, you know, going the next step. Yeah. Um, but I, it, from what I saw in the DOS version of it, mm. this is just, this is streets ahead. Yeah. They've just, this is, they've taken this to the next level. Yeah. And I think to, to really get the most out of it, you want to... Learn those keyboard shortcuts. Oh, Learn to drive from the keyboard. Or a, a bit of a tangent. When I was at my first year uni, yeah. I remember my a tutor in one of my subjects going, when everyone's going out to parties and doing all this fun stuff, you know, you probably you're better off just staying and and going through the the. This was. Oh, you know, early version of Microsoft Word. Okay. Go through and learn all the, 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 the tricks of how to use Microsoft Word. And I remember thinking, you've got to be kidding, right? <laughs> um, but <laughs> I, I, somewhere it must have stuck because uh, uh, I actually did spend a fair bit of time just getting how to use Word. So when everybody else was, was freaking out trying to get menus to work yeah, and how do I format this? subjects how do I do and this? and stuff, <laughs> like, I could just go... Da, 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 da. And so, you know... Yeah. So this, there is something to be said for just learning how to use something properly and even if it's maybe printing off a cheat sheet that you can have there so that oh, you sure. don't go, oh, I've forgotten what that is or I'll just use the mouse. Um, just Because as soon yourself. as you do that, yeah. you've, you've got out of the, 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 the running of, of how, to, you know, how to do it. And, and, you're, not, you, and you're not learning, correct. so you're not going to do and it you, correctly the next time. You're not making contacts. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. So, um, so, so, uh, you know, I, I can see how they've got to where they've got to. Mm. That, that sort of that trajectory. Yeah. It's, um, uh, and I, I, I didn't know about the voice key side of that. Mm. So that's excellent. Yeah. That is really good. Yeah, I think if, if people are keen, though, the thing to do is to install it now and, and just start using it for some general logging. Yep. And just get used to it. See how it works. Um, so that if you're going to use it, I don't know. It'd be, Seems like a pretty high risk strategy to use it for the first time in a contest where you want to do well. Um, and if you, but if you just if, play around with it a bit. And I, the last thing I went through on um, a couple of weeks ago was how do you change from just your logger to a contest and back again? Yeah. Um, and I, I found that I just went, hmm, actually that's really easy. Hmm. And you can just flip back to it just being a logger. So if you make a contact and you want to log it, it's really easy to do. Yeah. And I, I and I sort of went. I I actually really like that because that, that's one of the things that you and you you said that at the beginning. Hmm. VKCL and the other programs don't do very well at all. They're all contest based. Hmm. So if you just want a general logger, um, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you're going to be struggling because you're going to be going to another program. Hmm. Yeah, and the developers will say that this isn't a general logger and don't use it for general logging. Uh, but yet, lots of people do use it for general logging. Well, not sure. They even recommend well, sorry, sure. well, the, sure. the DX competition um, log file to yep. use that as your general logger, yep. if you're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't support it, but if you're going to do it, use they, this one. Use that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they realise yeah. that people are doing it. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So, um, th there's lots of good... Lots of good suggestions there, Lance, mm. um, because um, especially from the point of view, you, Lance said to me, oh, I've, I've got these ideas about, I, I think we can really use this to our advantage. Sorry, if you're not at VK7 again, yeah, just, yeah, stop just, listening. just block your ear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And and I, I sort of thought, hmm, I wonder what he's talking about there. <laughs> so I now realise um, we, we need to all sort of settle on uh, uh, the, the cluster, the mm. cluster that we're going to use. Um, and then it, it would probably be good to do maybe a little mock like yeah. mock contest or something yeah. and, and so that we all get used to N1MM and, and go from there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good, no, yeah. good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Well, that's that's excellent, Lance. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I encourage people to... Because the other thing about it is it's absolutely free. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, um, it is it's free software and um, you, you don't get free lunches these days. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and and, and these guys are, are doing like there's updates to the software frequently, so it's yep. not like they're resting on their laurels. Like mm. the team that that's writing this stuff, like they're really on their game. And it's quite a big team actually. Yes, yeah. it's, it's if you yeah. go through the website, yeah. um, the acknowledgements. So mm. a bit like WSJT is sort of it's not it's no longer just um, uh, just Joe Taylor. It's actually a whole team of people that are, are supporting the software. Mm. So uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic. It's okay. Well, thank you very much, Lance. Um, that was excellent. It's that okay. Was... Hopefully, we all feel like we've got one eye now. <laughs> <laughs> we're, yeah. we're all on the same level. Yep. And and um, non Vico sevens can start listening now. Oh, sorry. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Thank you very much. That's okay. You're we'll, welcome. We'll do a bit of a reset, and we'll come back with Caribou Light. Uh, so uh, that's our. That's our next um, uh, our next uh, presentation piece. So uh, stand by, and we'll be right back. Now that was one of those dodgy transitions again. Uh, <laughs> um, let me just um, zoom in here uh, because the thing that we're going to be discussing is the thing that's on your screen right at the moment, which is the caribou light. Um, now um, these have started to be shipped. Uh, I got mine about a fortnight ago. Uh, so did Ollie. <laughs> so it must have been the same yeah. shipment. Mine was um, a week ago. So. Uh, there you go. So they're they're finally, and this has been, uh, this has been a long time coming. Yeah, it's, is, it, it's fair to say, what it's been two years after a bit of a COVID delay. Ah, uh, correct, correct, yeah. correct. Um, uh, and, and me being the monetary enabler that I am, said, "Hey, Justin, take a look at this link." <laughs> <laughs> he, he's my technology consultant. <laughs> going, have a look at this, and I go, "Ooh, yeah. I like that." So. What is Caribou Light? Uh, for those people who don't know, um, so Caribou Light is, uh, it's a, uh, number one, it's an SDR, software defined yeah. radio. Uh, it goes up to six gigahertz, which is probably the thing that appeals yeah. to me. And it will go down to DC, even though it's rated at a minimum of 30 megs. Of 30 megs, well and truly. Um, so, so... What we talk and, and what we're talking about there is it's not only a receiver, it's a transceiver, um, fairly low power levels, but it is a transceiver. Um, it, it does it in a very interesting way um, because it uses that they it uses a modem chip, <laughs> an actual modem chip, which I think was actually the reason why there was a whole lot of delays because they got had yeah. trouble getting hold of the modem chip. Um, but it uses a modem chip. Uh, it, it's got a FPGA that's on board um, that uh, this, the the code gets downloaded into to control the modem chip. Um, the modem chip is good for 2.4 gigs, so it's a, a like a Wi-Fi yeah. modem chip. Um, but they put in um, the multipliers, which gets them up to the six gigs, 
uh, and that's why I think the lower the lower end is is at 30 megs um, and and the key thing is um, and you probably notice that there is a 40 pin connector here uh, the 40 pin connector plugs straight into a Raspberry Pi uh, Raspberry Pi Raspberry Pi zero and in fact if you're actually lucky enough to get a Raspberry Pi at the moment because <laughs> there's just none in stock well, I we well, I have a Raspberry Pi four. I probably shouldn't say Ooh. that because I'm now going to be I'm not, not, so, not going to be rated. Uh, where did you live again, Justin? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. don't, don't I, I'm from NZ. NZ. Yeah. NZ. Um, now, one, one, I'll put that back in there yeah. because this is this is very sexy. This is this is what yeah. are we looking at here, Ben? So obviously, I got my Caribou light the other week, and I had the Pi, and I. It was like, well, I can't just have that sitting standalone like, mm. say, that. Correct. I'm likely to have it fall and bust and whatever. So, my good amateur radio friend, Ken, VK7KRJ, <laughs> is an expert with uh, 3D printers. And he came up with... Yeah, and so he, look at I this. said, you yeah, know, can you take a look at this and make a case? And that is exactly what we have here. So, we've got the connectors and the SIM card yep. out, out there. I'll take the. Oh, oh. So there's the caribou light. Oh, yep. Let's turn it around so it's around the right way. And that's sitting on top of a Pi Zero. Yeah, just a Pi Zero, one one point one. Yep. Um, oh, I actually had that after winning it out of one of the Diode magazine. Oh, okay, okay. Now, I haven't had, had anything to do with it until now. Uh, well, so, there you go. So that was what it's a three, four year old Pi now. Ah, oh, well and truly. Now that uh, the the network connectivity for the Pi Zero is Wi-Fi, it, it is Wi-Fi. So you're seeing two micro USBs there, but both you can power it off, and that's a mini HDMI cable, which of course no one ever uses. So you have to set up the Raspberry Pi um, with, with headless with the SSH and correct, Wi-Fi. Correct. It's worth pointing out with the new version of Raspberry Pi OS, which was Raspbian. Yep. They've brought out their own image creator. Oh, okay. And okay. you have to use that image creator to give the Pi a initial username and password. You can't go in like you used to and just uh, put put uh, uh, enable SSH and then expect to log in with Pi, the Pi account. The Pi account is gone. So that was my first mistake thank, uh, thank the other you. night. Thank you, cyber security. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, after probably four hours of cursing and swearing at building this image, uh, we finally got there. Okay. Um, I've then spent another two days cursing and swearing at more because the installer for the Caribou light drivers yep. has been a bit problematic. It's... it's the okay. documentation is not fantastic. Okay. And when things go wrong, the documentation is non-existent because it is such a new item out there. People are still working it out themselves. So, so this is the libraries that... Yeah, so the, the yeah, as you've got there, the lit caribou light and yeah. soapy SDR drivers. Yeah, okay, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, now, one of the things I can do... Oh, I was just going to... This is the other side of the board, so you yeah. can see the 40-pin header here plugs into the, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see, actually, it's really... Flip it for the text. It's really, it's actually really... Because <laughs> there's the modem chip, yeah. there's the FPGA chip, there's the mixer chip, yeah. <laughs> there's the mixer right there. Um, they're the little transformers. Um, and that is the... What would that be? Uh, FPGA modem? Oh, that would be the power control. There. So... Um, TCXO, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, which is pointed at the connector. Um, and now, the two the two connectors on there. Now, this is interesting. There is a, what they refer to as the sub one gigahertz. Ooh. Now, this this was this was a bit confusing Dude. to me. No but then, kidding. But, <laughs> but then, I, and I went, what, what's, what, why would you even, why would you even think about putting, oh, hang on, wrong way. Um, so there's a sub one of those connectors is sub one gigahertz which gives you the three 
the 389.5 to 510 MHz and also the 779 to 1020 MHz and then there is the 6 gig connector which gives you the thir well Everything. the spec <laughs> yeah the, the 30 to 6 gig but what what they're actually saying it's interesting they make a little comment um, we we have we're sticking to the specifications of the modem chip <laughs> But we, we realise that most users will probably try and push this down and also up, um, and, which is you can do. So, uh, so yeah. Now, the, the other thing I just want to show was uh, the actual architecture, which is not, not that informative, but it, is, it does provide a little bit more. Um, you can see FPGA, uh, the mixer chip, the actual modem chip, sorry, the modem chip. Uh, then you've got the sub one gig which is basically straight through with a little bit of i think that's a filter uh you know ballon so that's matching uh out the the low pass filter and then out uh, and then the six gig chain there's a little bit of a uh, an rx tx switch uh there is a mixer in here now the interesting thing about this is it has an external reference connector yes. on it yeah. So you can, I think, potentially uh, um, lock it to like a 10 gig or other source. Uh, because so that, who'd want to do that in oh, this radio club? Who'd, who'd want to do that? You yeah. know. So I, I, I thought that was interesting. There's a couple of test points for both the RX and the TX lines. Goes through um, uh, switch, low pass, high pass filter, uh, another switch through some LNAs, so some amplification. Then out to uh, out to the connector. There's power distribution for all of this, uh, and then there's the header. So uh, so it, it, it's pretty simple. Um, it's pretty simple architecture. Um, but the the thing that jumped out to me, and the reason that I jumped in and bought it. Uh, oh, and there is um, there is uh, there is the spec sheet uh, that is available. The Caribou Light. There is a cheaper version. Uh, which doesn't go to six gig. Uh, it only has, uh, it basically covers the ISM bands. Yeah. Um, so, but there is a cheaper version. Um, and so the next question is, how much does it cost? One hundred and thirty-nine dollars US for the non-ISM version, and about half that for the ISM version. So, uh, so um, they do a little comparison chart of. This compared to the other, the various yeah. other SDRs, RFs, SDR spires, and, and this actually stacks up pretty well. Yeah. This has got a lot more functionality, so uh, for for in most cases cheaper. Um, so so yeah, it's yeah. Um, and and sexy little case, yeah. uh, very nice. Great, and, I mean, great work, Ken. You know, one hundred and thirty-eight US for DC to six gigahertz transceiver. Transceiver <laughs> com compared to what five. Ten years ago, I mean, you'd be paying thousands of yeah. dollars, uh, and it wouldn't definitely wouldn't go to six gigs. Yeah. Um, so so right. yeah, um, pretty impressed, and I'm I'm glad I actually I, I'm glad I stuck with it. Yeah. So uh, so, so yeah. So what? yeah, I've, I've got plans for this. I actually I only actually got this working just before coming up to the club tonight. Okay. Um, I've also installed the Open WebRx software, so okay. if you're familiar with Kiwi SDRs and yep. Lime SDRs on the net, I'm hoping to get this on the net. Okay. Uh, my plan will be I'm going to get a what the the all too familiar USB power bank, which will, I'm hoping to do some solar pass through okay. for, so it can charge off a solar panel yep. during the day and then stay up oh, cool. at night using a power bank. Cool. Stick the whole lot. Outside, it was in Wi-Fi signal range and a remote yep. receiver or yep. remote east receiver. I love it. So that is my grand plan for monitoring thing. Of course, it'll be going in a slightly better IPX rated case. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> so, but that 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 provides some good protection. Mm. Um, so for just everyday so usage, and if you want to just show it off, it's, well, yeah. well and truly, well and truly. So great work from uh, great work yeah. from Ken. <laughs> so uh, good stuff. I was out at um, Ken DY's place for his end of year uh, barbecue, mm -hmm. and um, Ken was showing me some of the stuff he was doing uh, with yeah. with three um, D printing, and I just couldn't believe. Number one, I couldn't believe the actual engineering strength mm. that you can get with three D printing. That, that um, was one of the first things I noticed with this was like how strong I can 
put some oh. pressure on it, Correct. and it's not going anywhere. No, and in the world. Compared to some of the other prints I've had done on a 3D printer, where if I do that, the whole thing just shatters. Correct. It's uh, really brittle. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's... I'm incredibly impressed. So, oh. um, back when the club did the Raspberry Pi, ape, um, what were they? The, oh, the, the, the packet boards. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to. I've asked Ken, can he do me a case for there you go. The, the, the packet radio? I love it. I love so. it. I love Although, it. Will, will I really need one if, I, if this will do it? Because uh, dot direwolf and all that. That's well, and, th and that's one of the things that they, the, the selling points for these were like DAB plus, uh, can I just say yeah. ATV, DATV? Yeah. Um, so uh, DVB-T, uh, yeah. I suspect yeah. what I we're mean, going to see. Yeah, so PSDR, Gene. GNU radio, so yep, yep. if you know how to drive GNU radio, you've got quite a Swiss Army toolkit there. Yeah, uh, well and truly. Um, yeah, I, I believe I'll get it going with um, some remote server stuff with the SOAP SDR server yep. and then be able to use things like Cubic SDR yep. and GQRX cool. um, SDR Sharp and that, cool. so, which will just connect via a network connection. Yep. And yeah, we'll see how it goes, but I'm really looking forward to having a play with this. Cool. So um, the key thing is, watch this space. Um, the caribou lights are, are landing, um, <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll see uh, see them deployed in a, a variety of applications. You know, for real good propagation. You could probably attach them to a balloon, don't you reckon? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're nice to light. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. quite a fine payload. Yeah. Imagine what, yeah. what you could transmit for one of those. Uh, pff, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't get shot down. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, Justin, as always, it's been a pleasure. Sean says hi, Ben. Okay, Sean. <laughs> Sean. Why, why aren't you up here? Sure. No, he was earlier. He was? He was oh. earlier. He was earlier. So, Damn. Uh, so, yes, he's he's headed home. Oh, well, I'll, I'll have to make a special trip up to New Norfolk then. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Oh, All right. Stuff. All right. Thank you, Ben. No All right. Thank you. And watch yep. out. Catch you later. <laughs> Cheers. Now, um, I, I keep banging on. I went to, uh, I spent the last fortnight in NZ. Um, and did a whole lot of stuff. Uh, one of the things that uh, I actually got up to in Auckland, uh, and can I just say I really feel for uh, New Zealanders tonight. Um, they've had uh, floods. Uh, they've now had uh, the aftermath of the cyclone, so really strong winds, a really intense low, and lots and lots of rain. And I only heard before I walked in here that they have now had a earthquake in Wellington. And, we, and Ruben and I actually visited Wellington. Really love Wellington, so I really hope uh, I really hope it hasn't done too much damage. Um, but they uh, they're not able to take a trick right at the moment. But when we were in uh, Auckland, I did a SOTR activation of uh, Mount Eden. Now, for anyone who knows Auckland, um, it is um, surrounded by harbours and and um, beautiful sea views. Uh, and Mount Eden is uh, about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes uh, walk, no, maybe half an hour walk from the CBD. Um, and it's a volcanic uh, a mountain. Um, it is only a, a little one pointer, uh, but it, it is, um, uh, it's a soda uh, summit and uh, has a wonderful lookout on top of it. Uh, so really, uh, really well put together for a um, uh, for a SOTA activation, uh, a quick SOTA activation. Uh, that's if uh, there are <laughs> there are people around, <laughs> there are amateurs around to give you contacts. Um, one of the uh, so this is um, this is uh, let's go to. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Uh, just to give you an idea of the, the sort of view uh, from Mount Eden, uh, and that's the, the Maori uh, name for it. Um, Mount Eden, uh, you'll see uh, there are, this is doing a, a bit of a 360 uh, around um, looking at, uh, now, Mount Eden, I think, is uh, about 100 and 150, I think it's about 150 uh, metres high. Um, you can you, you can certainly walk up it. It's not that uh, that uh, that bad. Now there's the CBD. There's Sky Tower uh, sitting there. Um, if we if we zoom if I zoom in on the right bit of it, 
Uh, there's Sky Tower and the CBD with all the buildings in it. So to give you an idea, um, that's how far away you are. Um, uh, oh, that's a duck in a window. Uh, <laughs> um, so so that's uh, that's Auckland, uh, and um, and uh, the uh, the soda activation that I actually did there. Now, unfortunately, uh, I was it was late afternoon. Um, and after um, putting the call out uh, on a, one of the repeaters, there's three re three repeaters available in uh, Auckland. Uh, I got uh, somebody to come back to me um, and tell me what the calling frequency for SOTA was, uh, because I was using the uh, the band plan calling frequencies, and the frequency for SOTA was different. Uh, so that's why nobody was coming back to me. But uh, when I got to uh, uh, and it happened to be our calling frequency, which is 146500. Uh, so I started putting out calls, uh, had a few contacts, um, and then uh, really, really struggled to get a third. I went back to the guy on the repeater and uh, asked him to try a simplex, uh, and unfortunately he was quite a distance out of Auckland uh, and couldn't, uh, couldn't get a good enough signal to have a simplex contact with him. Uh, so he would have been my fourth uh, and activation. So I made four contacts, but only three of them were simplex. So I didn't actually activate um, Mount Eden, uh, but tried valiantly to try and uh, get the uh, get the the contacts. So uh, anyway, that was uh, that was my a bit of um, wasn't the weather wasn't quite as bad as Hayden's uh, soda activation. So, uh, but uh, I I didn't uh, I didn't end up making the uh, the, the contact. Now, what I thought I would do very quickly, uh, how am I going for time? Uh, 51.20. Okay. Uh, now, um, I've gone on about this a few times. Um, the magnetic loop tuner um, that I am building, uh, this is... Oh, wrong way. Uh, this is by Dave uh, Trewen, who is a G7 uh, IYK. Uh, now, the final chips, which is these, uh, these mixers, uh, VHF mixers um, arrived a couple of days ago uh, so I have a, a completed board apart from the uh, the the the, um, the connector for the uh, motors for the uh, for the tuning motors for the uh, va vacuum capacitor on the mag loop uh, but that is um, uh, that's ready to go and I start using uh, I'm actually I have the magnetic loop right at the moment on the um, see, see you Ben um, uh, I, the magnetic loop on 20 meters uh, whisper just received right at the moment uh, and um, it's doing uh, doing absolutely uh, uh, wonderful uh, <laughs> wonderful work on uh, on whisper uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm I'm impressed uh, it is really really sharp in tuning so that's what uh, this particular board uh, will help me to do, uh, which is actually keep it in tune. So when I change frequencies, it will actually uh, retune the uh, magnetic loop to the frequency that I'm on. There's a little uh, SWR bridge in here, um, uh, and uh, give me the uh, the information about what's uh, what it's doing at the time and where it is. I can also control this particular one through the USB port. There is a wonderful little uh, PC application that Dave's. Uh, come up with so that's the uh, the magnetic loop uh, the mag loop um, tuner uh, and that's the progress on that uh, hope to have that uh, um, hope to have that uh, demonstrable uh, probably in April uh, and have a uh, have a bit of a um, uh, an interesting um, interesting little talk on uh, magnetic loops and and a demonstration. Uh, so people get a feel for, um, I, I, I think there's a lot of, um, what would you call it? Not disinformation, but there's a lot of um, interesting information out there about magnetic loops. Uh, and I can actually demonstrate um, what a loop's all about. Uh, the bandwidth, uh, the really narrow bandwidth that it's got uh, due to high Q, um, etc. So um, uh, I can actually demonstrate, and I can also demonstrate the, um, the mag loop tuner. Uh, so uh, and how that actually helps you uh, to uh, to use your uh, magnetic loop. Now, I'll finish off with a interesting article, a very interesting article that I came across. 
<laughs> which caught my eye and not the best prices in Australia wide it's the scientists actually did it they built a real working tractor beam <laughs> One that can manipulate objects and everything. So um, scientists, uh, and we're talking Chinese uh, scientists here, are built a, a working tractor beam. The first example of one that pulls uh, visible uh, uh, pulls objects visible to the naked eye. Um, <laughs> highly controlled laboratory experiments. So that's interesting. I'm not sure that this is going to be uh, a tractor beam that's uh, available to us anytime soon. Uh, but um, uh, the the thoughts are um, that it could be um, could be actually um, uh, used uh, uh, and have application for a whole range of things. Um, it was published in a journal called Optic Express. Chinese scientists created the first tractor beam strong enough to manipulate macroscopic objects. Uh, that means that you can watch the thing work with the naked eye. They've certainly done this uh, at microscopic uh, objects uh, and, and certainly uh, within chips and within vacuums and that sort of thing, uh, but uh, they, they haven't been able to then scale that up. Uh, so um, uh, manipulating a specific type of graphene composite and under a rarefied gas yes, environment with a, the, a lower pressure than Earth's atmosphere. Uh, but uh, they used a laser to move the object. So uh, very interesting. So I, I think uh, I'll be watching this uh, with a bit of interest. Uh, it's only a, a bit of a taster article, but it does have the, um, uh, the link to, uh, to the actual article that was published uh, in the, uh, the journal Optic Express. So uh, watch this space, working tractor beam. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, uh, very interesting article. Now, uh, what we'll do, uh, I'll, I'll hold over the, uh, the Jubis and the Low Key magazine <laughs> until next week, uh, but uh, we, we will have them uh, all through... Uh, uh, all through the uh, the month, uh, the DATV nights. Now, just remind everybody uh, in Tasmania, in southern Tasmania, that the uh, Reist AGM is on uh, Saturday. It's on Saturday. There is a free barbecue up here at 12 noon, uh, and then the AGM gets underway from 1 p.m. Uh, and we'll be distributing the information pack to everyone via the uh, email mail list um, so that members have... Uh, have their pack of information uh, beforehand um, and uh, they'll be able to then ask questions about it um, at the uh, actual AGM. Uh, and also uh, just a reminder on the 1st of March our next presentation night uh, 1st of March at 7.30 p.m. we've got Ollie VK7 NFI uh, great call sign um, who has a presentation on the Kraken, which is another open source, um, another open source project for a uh, direction finding SDR. Uh, so uh, should be a good night. We might even be doing some uh, uh, amateur radio direction finding with it on the night. Uh, don't quite know what Ollie's got in store for us, but anyway, he's he's putting together uh, a presentation on the Kraken SDR. So uh, that should be a good. Uh, a, a good night, 1st of March. So, without further ado, I will um, will uh, bid you farewell, and we get underway 7.30 p.m. next uh, next week for another uh, DATV night. And this has been VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our DATV experimenters night. 73, bid you, uh, bid you farewell, and uh, yeah, I uh, hearts go out to uh, our New Zealand, uh, our New Zealand friends, and I hope uh, hope they're safe and uh, th they stay well. 73.